guys, I'm Danny LeBeau. Welcome back to The Fourth Revolution, where I discuss stocks for your portfolio of the future. So this is part two of speculation. And, you know, these specs are running rampant in the market today. We've had over 250 blank check IPOs in the last 52 weeks, generating $80 billion in market value. And Jim Chanos is saying that $2 billion is being generated on a daily basis. And this is a red hot market right now. But the question is, is it too hot? Are we creating bubbles in spaces of this uh, of this market that shouldn't be there? Are we driving stocks above their intrinsic value? And you know, the, the basic premise of a SPAC is that they're able to market their shares to retail investors like traditional IPOs cannot do. Um, and this is giving, I think, some of these stocks a little bit more zeal and a little bit more attraction from these retail investors than you would see from a traditional IPO. And I think that's driving um, a lot of the growth that we've been seeing in these stocks as well as a lot of the volatility. You know, retail investors have never been a more important part of the market as than today. So Nikola is a perfect example of some of the retail risk that we're seeing from these SPACs. Um, Nikola, uh, obviously off the namesake of Tesla, was a, uh, a huge incumbent in this new alternative energy driven uh, automotive market. And you can see retail investors just driving this thing to the moon, hitting it high of just shy of $94 a share. And this was a clear bubble. Um, this company has actually been uh, accused of fraud and you know they didn't get through the traditional IPO process. So these institutional investors didn't get time to kick the tires, so to speak, and really dive into what this company was and where its primary market drivers and revenue drivers were going to be coming from in the future. So with the retail investors driving the majority of this market's upside, um, there was a significant amount of risk. And once fraud was uh, accused of this company, uh, you can see these shares just plummeted, trading at under $20 a share today. And I would not be touching this company anytime soon. QuantumScape. This is a stock that I was actually pitching when the deal was announced in mid-October. Um, and you can see we've had some parabolic gains driving north of $100 a share and then back down to $50 a share. This company is uh, is backed by Volkswagen and a number of other automotive makers. And their main focus is to make the next generation of battery technology with uh, lithium metal, which is supposed to be twice as energy dense as lithium ion, which is going to be the future of battery technology as we know it. But they're not going to be generating any kind of sales or revenue till 2024. So the valuation in a company like this is beyond ambiguous, especially when the future of interest rates is extremely uncertain. Um, and you can see the rise and fall of this stock illustrating that going all the way up to, you know, from $10, $14 a share here all the way up to $132.70 is where it topped out at. And now we're trading at $51. And th these are companies that are very ambiguous for me as an investor and as an analyst to, um, to really quantify. It's not a company that I would jump into at this point, but like I said, these SPAC IPOs create a lot of risk in the markets. And this is just one example. We talked about Nikola in part one, how that bubble popped. And this could be another one of those bubbles that's just deflating. And you can see it with, uh, with DraftKings. I mean, DraftKings does have a compelling uh, product offering with their digital online betting platform that you can do straight from your phone. It's actually similar to, uh, to Robinhood just for gambling um, and some people are saying Robinhood's done for gambling as well. But like I said, lots of volatility and lots of pushes. And you know, the reason why these private equity companies and these venture capitalists are creating these SPACs right now is because they know they're going to get the most value out of it right now. They know these retail investors are going to be driving these stocks to the moon because they have this risk appetite. It's the same kind of risk appetite that we saw in 1999. It's very reminiscent of it. We've had these message rooms, these blogs, these chat boards that are talking about stocks 
And they're not worried about valuation. No one cares about valuation. Like I said, this company isn't going to be generating, uh, QuantumScape isn't going to be generating any kind of revenue until 2024, and they're still driving the stock to the moon. It's It's got a valuation of over $18 billion. And, um, you know, DraftKings is a similar story. Uh, so the question is, is where do we go from here? Okay. And I myself am protecting myself against uh, some of the pullbacks I think are on the horizon. I think that this Q4 earnings season could see some profit pulling from the most parabolic stocks. And obviously tech has been the biggest beneficiary of this digital wave that we saw in 2020. Um, and I am buying some QQQ puts um, with expirations starting in late February all the way into April as I think that this pullback could happen, um, especially with this new blue wave occurring. Um, right now, the S&P 500 is trading at a level, you know, draw out this Fibonacci level that I have been watching. And it's actually just drawn from this one day, the first day of trading, January 4th, um, coming down from the highs to the lows of this trading day. And you can see that we, um, we're bouncing off this golden ratio level here. Went a little bit above it yesterday, but the futures uh, are decidedly lower today. And the market is pulling down after four straight days of upside and these levels being hit. So like I said, we are in a place where a pullback could be necessary. You know, the we're talking about more economic stimulus. We got $1.9 trillion in economic stimulus hitting the markets very soon here. Um, and it's already priced in. The markets didn't respond to that because they already knew this was happening. We got to realize that, that a lot of this is already priced in. We can see QQQ, the NASDAQ 100, the innovation-driven, the tech-driven uh, tech ETF is at its highest forward PDE level. It's hits in the last 15 years. Um, and obviously, low interest rates are a catalyzer of this. So I think that uh, the markets are a little bit too euphoric right now. We're seeing a ton of growth in these red-inked bottom line companies, aka unprofitable tech companies that have just had parabolic growth. And speculation is just the epitome of, of this euphoria in the markets. And obviously, like the famous John Keynes said, uh, you know, the markets can be irrational longer than you can say solvent. So I would be selling out of all my positions. I'm just protecting myself with these puts in QQQ um, as well as SPY with expirations ranging from March to June. And it's, it's just a protection to make sure that you don't lose out on all the gains that you've had in the last 52 weeks. Um, so make sure you take a look at those options and uh, and, and make sure that you are – yourself protected um, against what could happen in the next couple months here. So don't forget to check out zax.com slash promo for our latest promotion. And thanks for watching, guys.